Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to attempt to make a repair to an umbrella rib that broke in a windstorm last night. Stay tuned, we'll get right at it. Good morning everybody, hope you're having a great day. I'm Richard and this is a little bit of everything. Welcome back to the channel. So, um, as I said in the, uh, in the opening, my wife and I were having some friends over last night and you can see the wind's blowing pretty good right now. Um, it was a beautiful evening and we were gonna eat out here on the deck and have some friends over, have a couple adult beverages. You know the game, just, just chit chat and enjoy fellowship with our friends. Well, as we were sitting out here about 15 minutes before people were supposed to show up, this wind came up out of nowhere. We had no idea that it was gonna be this bad. We hadn't seen any forecasts about it. I mean, obviously we've been looking at that because we were having people over. So anyway, the wind came up and out of nowhere, our umbrella, which is cantilevered. There's a big heavy base there. And it cantilevers over the deck. And I'm sure you've seen it in some of my other videos before. Well. This umbrella got picked up by the wind. It was open above our table. It got picked up and blown over the top of that grill, right? The, the, the grill stand. And it was open like this above it. The whole base had tipped. And it took her and I a good 10 minutes to work against the wind to try to get that thing back off of the, uh, the grill stand. I was, I was really worried it was gonna ruin the grill stand. So, we managed to get it down, but in the process, this stupid arm broke. And uh, as you can see right here, it broke. It didn't come apart at the um, joint there. It broke in the middle. So in today's video, I'm going to attempt to put this thing back together. I've devised a plan. So... Uh, the steps that I'm gonna go through in order to fix that, um, I'll show you here in the next part of the video, so stay tuned. Okay, everybody, so here are some of the things that I picked up at Menards today that I'm going to use uh, to try to make this repair. And, and again, I'm kind of flying off the seat of my pants here, so um, I'll get to the tools here in a second. I picked up, um, let's just start with the JB Weld picked up a package of JB Weld. This is the kind that you squirt together and you only use what you need and then you can twist it off and reuse it. So that's pretty useful. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain what I'm gonna do with all this in a minute. I have a package here of um, mending brackets. Uh, they're <clears throat> about three and a half, four inches long. Got four holes drilled in them. Um, and again, I'll explain to you what I'm gonna do with those. Package of machine screws. These are 12 by 24 by one inch. Um, I have a roll of brown duct tape. Again, I'll explain. Um, I have a uh, grinder here that I'm gonna use to cut some extruded metal. I have my drill motor that I'm gonna use and uh, then I have some metal cutting bits. And uh, when I was at Menards, I really, when I went there, kind of went with an idea in my head what I was going to do. But what I ended up picking up was some extruded metal. And I don't know if you have a Menards or a Home Depot or a Lowe's or an Ace Hardware or something close to you. Most all of those places sell these pieces of extruded metal, aluminum, steel, uh, all different kinds of lengths, widths, sizes. <clears throat> what I picked up when I was there was this, uh, this bar here, um, it's about two foot long. As you can tell, it's pretty thin. Um, I picked it up because I had originally picked up this U-channel, which if you look at that, you can see that that's a U-channel. My thought was that I would be able to slide this up inside and uh, that would be a really, really strong repair. But as it turned out, um, when I checked, this is just a tad bit too big, so I'm not going to be able to use it. But when I was there and I picked it up, I thought, oh, that'd be perfect, but what if it doesn't fit? Which is why I bought this one as well. So I could just take this back, get my five bucks back for that. 
So this is what I'm going to use, and I'm going to base my repair around this. So um, with that in mind, let me kind of walk you through what my plans are to uh, do this repair. Okay, so here's my plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to a certain length. I haven't decided yet how long. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to slide this up inside of one side of the tube. I will bend the other side down, slide this into the other side of the tube. But before I do that, I'm going to put JB Weld on both ends of it so that when I slide it in there, that'll help fuse this on the inside of that extruded aluminum rib on the, uh, on the umbrella. And this will make more sense when, when you see it, but I'm going to slide it in there. Here's the other side. I'll slide that in, and then this will be inside of that uh, aluminum rib. It'll act as a uh, solid piece inside there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some holes on either side of the brake. I'm going to take these brackets and I'm going to put it, the brake is there. I'm going to put this on either side and I'm not going to use the screws that came in here because those are wood type screws. I'm going to use these machine screws and I'm going to run those all the way through both the, uh, the rib through this extruded aluminum out the other side. And this comes with um, bolts as well, and I'm gonna bolt that down. Once that's done, I'm going to cut the end of the screw off. I'm gonna come back with this tape, which is basically the same color as my umbrella rib, and I'm gonna wrap the entire, um, the entire repair with this. At least you won't be able to immediately identify that repair when you look up there and see it. The only downside to this is my umbrella has LED lights that run all the way through it. So that th it that broke and there's no way for me to fix that. So I will be without my LED lights, but at least I don't have to go spend another $300 on a new umbrella. So that's the plan. We'll see how the plan comes together and I'll walk you through how I do it. So as I open the umbrella here, the intent is to measure the ribs on the inside with this extruded aluminum so I can get an idea of how long this thing needs to be so I can get it cut and I can get it put into place. So here you see me measuring it and uh, adjusting that and marking it so I can go cut the piece. Okay, so you can see here, this is the other end of it that's broke. This is the end. Actually, it's twisted, there we go. This goes into that little pocket. This end right here goes into that pocket. And then this end attaches to this end. So I'm gonna take that extruded piece of aluminum and I'm gonna run it up inside of here. And I'm gonna run it down into here, down to this joint. And then I'll sandwich that bracket across this, drill holes through each one of these. And hopefully that'll be enough to hold it together. So let me see how much of that I can get done here. Pretty simple little task here. Uh, just got my grinder wheel out uh, with a cutting blade on it so that I can score and mark this extruded aluminum um, just so that I can get it snapped off at the right length and then go place it inside the umbrella uh, so I can check the fit and make sure that everything's going to work properly for this repair. You can see how that is going to hold together. So what I need to do now <coughs> Let's come in with my JB Weld and kick it inside of there. Squish that together. And what I'm gonna do is probably tape it and let that JB Weld set up. And then once that's set up, I'll come in back and I'll drill holes on either side of this and that will hold it all together. So stand by for the JB Weld. Okay, so what's going on here is I am mixing up the JB Weld, uh, that handy dandy little tube puts it out in the proper format so I'm mixing it up with a little plastic knife in this bowl and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that JB weld and I'm going to force it into the corners or the ends of the both sides of this extruded aluminum rib here on this umbrella so I'm cutting off a couple slices of tape here so that I can use those as a clamp to hold this rib together while it while the JB weld um, sets up inside there you can see I forced it down inside there and I'm just kind of wiping it around the edges of it. Uh, and then I'm going to take that tape and I'm going to wrap it around um, that repair and try to hold that whole thing together uh, as that JB Weld tries to set up. 
doesn't do the greatest job in the world, but uh, you'll see that here in a second. All right, here we go. So this is the next day. You can see it's kind of separated there a little bit, but you know what? It's fused together. I've been messing with it. It's not coming apart that JB Will did its job. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the bracket on either side of this. Um, and I think I'm gonna call that good once I get that bracket on. So let's, let's get to working on that. As you can see here, I have the brackets. I bought these at uh, Menards. And this is what I'm gonna use to secure both sides of this together. As I said, I'm not going to use the screws in here, but what I want to do right now is I just want to position these up there and get them marked so that I can drill the holes. So as you can see, I got all the holes drilled through. So now let's get those brackets on there. Okay, that's the bracket in place. Now I'm just gonna go get a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and tighten that all down. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've found some brown duct tape. I uh, found some that I tried to match the color of the rib as best I could, and uh, I got as close as uh, the colors that they had available. And what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping this repair up enough so that it's not blatantly obvious uh, that there's a repair done there. You know, those silver brackets sticking out would have been out, sticking out like a sore thumb. So I'm just going ahead and wrapping this up with that uh, duct tape. Um, just it's really just aesthetics to, to hide the repair so that it's not uh, so obvious um, it, it's not the greatest looking thing in the world but at least it does fix it uh, so it's not obvious and with that last piece of tape that I'm putting on right there that basically finishes the repair and what you're seeing there is the final output of, uh, of, of the repair itself And lastly, uh, here I am uh, showing you the functionality of the umbrella once the repair has been made so that you can see that it opens and operates correctly just like it's supposed to. Uh, the umbrella is then extended out over the area it's supposed to be and you can see when I got it in full extension that the umbrella works perfectly. Hey everybody, just thought I'd uh, do a quick outro here and let you know that the uh, umbrella job's done. I am... Um, Finished it all up. It's too windy to go out there and show you uh, exactly what it looks like. Crazy wind, I tell you. Um, haven't had wind here for uh, three months, and then all of a sudden, the last three days, <laughs> it's been crazy. But uh, anyway, uh, it's done. I finished it. Uh, really would love to hear what your comments are. If you have any, uh, leave them down below, and, uh, and I'll respond back to them. Um, if you've got any questions or anything else, feel free again to comment. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm Richard. This is a little bit of everything. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you want to get notified when I release others. And uh, with that, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Faith Changes Everything. I'm Richard. And if you're still here with me on this video, I certainly do appreciate you. I sure, certainly appreciate you staying with me and I hope that you're having the most blessed of days. Sorry for the respite. I've had COVID. I've been gone for, uh, oh, probably two or three weeks just trying to recover from that. So my wife had it too. We're both just <clears throat> getting over that. So um, I apologize for not getting uh, back to you guys sooner than I have, but um, I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, so if you follow this portion of my videos, you know that this is where we do some things that are based around the Christian faith. Everything from dissecting verses from the Bible to me providing what God's put on my heart to put out there uh, to just praying for people in our lives who need our prayers. Uh, I know 
Sometimes it seems like I jump around some, but there is a clear and honest reason for that. And it's mainly because I'm here doing this because I'm following what God has asked me to do each time I deliver a video. Um, I trust in him that what I'm saying, someone somewhere needs to hear those words. So I do his work and obey his call. You know, this was not always a clear mission for me when I started because just like most things that we do when we're looking for ways to satisfy our own will and our own needs, we think of things we want, we think of things that will make us happy and we start down the road to completing that. <clears throat> and for me, the example of the fact that I'm doing YouTube videos is a completion of that, that desire to put content out there for people to share ideas, to show things that I know, to provide some guidance or assistance to things that some might think are trivial, but to me, they have value in, in that I feel I'm providing a service to someone who's clicking on that video link because they want to learn something. And that's kind of the way I do things too. I use YouTube all the time. God put the need to teach in me and he actually put that need in my family as my dad was a strong Christian man. He was a deacon in our church. My sister is a teacher. So is her daughter. My brother has the faith calling as well. It's in us to want to help others in some way, but one thing that I did not count on when I started doing this was God starting to put his desire in me to do something more with this platform, to do his work, to spread his word, to put out there the messages that he wants me to send. <clears throat> so as a result of that calling, uh, you see the faith changes everything portion of the video at the end of the little bit of everything video as a way to spread that word that God has put on my heart to do. In a way, I guess you could call it a mission, uh, not in the traditional sense, but it is my mission to continue to put out God's word and to continue to be faithful to his desire for me to use this platform for his teachings. You want to know how I know that this is working? Because I've never been more attacked by the enemy over the last six months of my life than I have after starting this channel. It seems there's been an endless series of trials, pitfalls, illnesses, financial issues, just constant attacks on my family and our health, anything to stop me from continuing God's work. You might have noticed that it's been several weeks since my last video, as I mentioned, and that has to do with my wife and I getting over COVID. Like I said, it's been a trial and I've uh, seen some dark moments, but that kind of takes me to directly to what I want to talk to you about briefly in this video. I have a cousin and her husband and their wonderful son who live in Alaska, and I cannot tell you the help they are to me with prayers, inspiring text messages, words of hope, support. But the biggest of all these, they are the most ardent prayer warriors, and I'm beyond blessed to have them in my life. They support what I'm doing, and, and, and they pray over my mission constantly. And to that end, I want to return the favor. But I want to add all of you listening to this, to this prayer chain, because I want all of us to directly pray for their son, Samuel. He's such a wonderful young man, a, a blessed example of the love and dedication that Jamie and Mel have put into raising this inspiring young person. You know what Samuel's doing this weekend? He's a 20-something, and, and no, he's not taking a vacation to a beach somewhere to drink and carry on. He's not in a bar or sitting around playing video games. This young man is on a mission trip to Alaska, or in Alaska. Now, I thought about putting some detail together on exactly what was going on, but I, I don't want to invade their privacy. So let me just say this. This young man is in a remote part of Alaska, a place that can only be accessed by fishing boat to go do God's work on this trip. And to say I'm humbled to know him and this family and to see how the power of God is working through them, to not only support and raise this incredible young man, but to also have time to hit their knees and pray to the point of tears for me and my mission. I cannot tell you how blessed I feel to have them in my life. Yes, they are family, and yes, I am a strong believer in the love and support of family, but family really has nothing to do with their desire to love and support me, to lift me up in times when I know I'm being attacked, to pray and ask for God to continue to strengthen me. It goes way, way beyond that. They know it's what God wants for me, for you, and for him. That is why they pray to fulfill, fulfill his will. That is why I feel so undeserving, but more than that, so very thankful and beyond blessed to have their faith in my mission. But I know God's hands are in it all, not only for the betterment of what I'm doing here, but also so they can see how their faithfulness 
is rewarded in the love their son has for his God. It's so amazing. So with all that being said, I want to say a prayer for Samuel, for his mission, for his mission team members, and for his faithful service to our God. I'm asking each of you to pray a prayer with me. Do this, if you will, please bow your head with me as I pray. Dear Lord, during this time when our dear Samuel and his brothers and sisters are away from us, I pray that you grant them the time that they need to spend with you. Give them just a few minutes of quiet time each day to med meditate on your word so that their relationship with you continues to grow daily. I pray that as they study, they will hide your word in their heart. And as they need it to be recalled to their memory, that the Holy Spirit prompts them at just the right moment. God, I know that one of Paul's prayers for the Ephesian church was that they would grow in spiritual wisdom and depth of love. I ask that this mission team and its members who all need an abundance of wisdom and love, that they feel your desire to provide it and that these mission team members will be abundantly wise and discerning as well as filled with the love for those who they serve and share this with. God, we know Satan blinds the eyes of the unbelievers to the truth of the gospel and the glory of Christ. Because of this, we know it is the Holy Spirit's role to convict and bring to light the truth of the power of the gospel. I pray as the Holy Spirit went forward and ahead of this mission to prepare the hearts of the lost to respond to Christ, that the Spirit would draw unbelievers to Christ through the preaching of the gospel, through this mission, and that your word would dwell in the hearts and minds of those who hear it forever. God be with these young people as they work to fulfill your calling in their lives, that you continue to guide and direct them, and also continue to give us the, give us the stewards of the hearts and minds of our children, that same spiritual wisdom to be there to help them continue on the road to fulfilling your desire for their life. I thank you, Lord, for Samuel and his love and devotion to you and what you've called him to do. I thank you for Mel and Jamie, for the power of your word in their life, in their hearts, and on the tips of their tongues every day, for their relentless desire to be like Christ and love unconditionally, support without question, and comfort without needing to know why. God, you are so amazing. I ask that those listening today be drawn to you in a way they have never known before and the questions in their heart drive them to your word and to their eternal salvation. We ask forgiveness and ask for you to dwell within us everlasting. God, I ask all of these things in the name of your precious son. Amen. For whatever prayer you prayed in that few moments that we prayed for Samuel and his mission team, I certainly appreciate it. And believe me, it goes straight to the heart of why we're here today to serve one another and to be there for one another and lift each other up every single day as we can. Before I let you go, going forward in each of my faith videos, I'm going to be praying a prayer of salvation to close my videos. I want to give anyone listening and watching a chance to come to Christ and know the same power of faith and love and hope that I cling to each and every single day. So look forward to that. Thank you for joining me. And remember, God loves you so very much. And so do I. Until next time.